we're going to go ahead and jump into the rest of the uh, conference previews. And um, you guys just stay tuned. This is the premier sports betting show, the primetime angles with the one and only Pop DiBiase, the primetime cap. Good news only racing club led by the legendary Doug O'Neill, the trainer of two Kentucky Derby winners and I'll have another in Nyquist. Also trained two-time Breeders' Cup champ Golden Sense, who are just a part of a long list of thoroughbred champions trained by Doug O'Neill. The Good News Only Racing Club has a young core of horses to look out for in Dennis's Celery, Irish Heatwave, and Notre Dame, just to name a few. Win the day every day with the Good News Only Racing Club, a proud sponsor of the NFL Bet Exchange. From the East and the West, you've heard others, but now you've tuned into the best. This is a Prime Wave Media production. Tune into Big Wave Boxing every week with a brand new guest with the one and only Pop DBI's the primetime capital. Getting the best boxing stories, best boxing angles, and the truth when it all comes down to the sweet science. Tune into Big Wave Boxing on the Prime Wave Media Channel on YouTube. We are back with the premier sports betting show, the primetime angles with the one and only Pop DBIC, the primetime capper. Let's go ahead and jump into the Mountain West. And in the Mountain West, we have a very wide open conference. Let's keep it real. We got the West side and we got the Mountain side. And on the West side, we got Fresno, who's looking to return to the championship game. And you know what? Fresno has been the constant consistent in my opinion they'll say san diego state but it seems like fresno always has their number and it seems like fresno is the one team that is everybody's kryptonite in the mountain west like literally like when it comes down to a big game and you got to play fresno road or home fresno always bring brings the hat they always bring bring the drama and you know what they're a very trusted team to a lot of us betters as well too but I truly do feel that Fresno State's going to have one of their better seasons this year because they just been able to supply so many good players to the NFL over the last five years or so. They just got Jake Hayner there, um, who I felt was the best quarterback in this year's draft. So, you know, there's a lot of good things going on in um, Fresno right now. And um, that's good because Fresno is a very, very uh, – dangerous place and it's good to be able to smile at some things in a place like fresno so i like the over eight and a half here with fresno plus 140 is the uh number i like them as a nine and three uh team this year i think they're going to be really good man I, that's how i'm seeing it um hawaii i think a lot of people probably will sentimental bet hawaii this year but i think hawaii is going to be a bad team i'm gonna just keep it real with you i haven't heard anything that said that hawaii was going to be a uh, team that's going to challenge for anything. Like if you have three and a half wins as your win total, and I feel like you're much better than that, then I probably would go over. But I know Hawaii is going to be um, a lot of teams sparring partners. So I do think the under three and a half is the better player. Um, also, you have the, you also have the, you also have the Nevada Wolfpack. They're looking to put themselves back into the mix somewhat with this conference and not fall too far off, you know, for recruiting purposes and everything like that. They do not want UNLV to get ahead of them. UNLV is already playing in a better stadium. They're already in a better city. And, uh, you know, they really do have to make sure that they don't get Get, they don't lose the internal battle to their South rivals. You know what I mean? I think that they'll be good this year. I think Nevada is going to be um, a team that wins five or more games. That's why I got them at the over four with the plus 125. Also, we have the San Diego State under seven minus 115. And um, this is going to be a very, very fun play 
for us. I feel like uh, San Diego State is always figuring out ways to mess the money up. So I think that they're going to be a 500 team this year. I'm not going to say they're below 500, but they look like a six and six or better team. Seven and five, no better than that this year, I feel. You know, I think San Diego State is going to have to really put themselves back in the mix as, you know, the team in the um, Mountain West because the division, the conference is wide open and this division is, is there's teams ahead of them this year. I'm sorry. They're just, there just is. And um, you have San Jose State. San Jose State has been on the cusp of being, you know, a consistent winner. They they did win the uh, conference a few years back, which was beautiful. And they also won their bowl game. And you have to understand, it's beautiful because San Jose State is most times they're a really bad team. Like they'll be lucky to win three games. You know what I mean? Now they have a little bit of expectations, and over five is very doable for this team because they play so well at home. That's one thing about um, San Jose State, and they've been able to have one of the more stingier defenses as well too in conference play now unlv unlv said that they're ready to bust out they're ready to stop messing around and become a team that's relevant and i think that you know you can kind of believe them we'll see the first two months but we'll see you know what i mean but i think that they can be a six one team this year because i feel like they're going to play better at allegiant like you have to play better at the raiders stadium before they start making you play in the parking lot dog seriously because you're not really even bringing fans into those games and the whole point of going to allegiant was was to build up the school to possibly be in a bigger conference because they play in that type of venue now we'll see how it goes but i do like the over five and a half i feel like now we're the we're transitioning into the third year into the stadium so they should be like used to it and they should say to themselves, this is our house, and we're not losing in here. It's that simple. You know what I mean? All right, the Mountain Division. Now, Air Force, who's been a very consistent team in the conference over the last few years, probably have the best system in the um, conference as well, too, because the way that they run the ball is also potent, and the way that they hold on to the ball, just if, if it was Madden, you would probably want to jump through the TV and choke Air Force's offensive coordinator because that's what we call grandpa playing right there, where you gonna slow that game, to, where you go ahead and you slow the game down somewhat, but you don't slow the game down. You speed the game up, but you not run into the line. You are using as much clock as you can. All right, Boise State is has been you know seen as the elite team of this conference the last twenty years. Everybody's still living off the Statue of Liberty play from Ian Johnson. You know what I mean? And um, Boise is stay consistent. But I think this year they're, they're, they're going to start showing the wears and tears um, that come with, you know, being a, being a consistent winner. I think that they're going to go under eight, eight and a half this year. Colorado State is a very tricky situation. They got a, a lot of good California players there. Uh, right now but it all depends on how the coach wants to go ahead and do this thing I think that they're good enough to go over four and a half wins this year and the spread is pretty much saying that that should be a a, a strong bet for that to happen and New Mexico who's been atrocious the last few years you know sanctionings and things like that not being able to recruit the same player because they used to be able to recruit that guy that was on his last chance and he needs New Mexico more than New Mexico needs him and all that good stuff. Well, those guys, those guys are gone. So now New Mexico is just kind of going with the motions a little bit, but the over three and a half to me shows that this team is building for the up and up. And I think that's where we're at right now with New Mexico. They won't be down for too much longer. Utah state, over five plus 120. Utah State is the quiet wild card in this conference. Everybody knows when you go to Orem, it's going to be a tough game. Let's just keep it real. And everybody knows when Utah State is rolling, they're hard to beat. And this team, if they can get on a roll, if their defense can step it up, um, they have nothing but opportunity to go ahead and be that team this year, in my opinion. So, 
The over five plus 120 is very valuable, in my opinion, because I think we absolutely crushed that bet right there. So we end with Wyoming, and I think Wyoming is in for a really bad season. If I could have said they're going to be under four and a half games, I would put that there. I just don't think Wyoming is going to be that good this year. I don't think even playing in Laramie is going to be helpful for them this season, to be honest with you. So that's that, and that's going to be our group for today um, in the uh, Mountain West. And let's go ahead and look at who I got picked as the champion. I think it won't surprise anybody either because I talked about him so highly. But we got Fresno as our champions at four to one. They are presenting a lot of good value, but this is just a lot of good value in the conference period. So pretty much they're telling me that there's five teams right now that could take this conference because if you're not, if you're under 10 to one, you have a, a, to me, a strong chance to win the conference. Okay. And I think that Fresno is the perfect number. And I think Fresno's in the perfect scenario this year too, to go ahead and win their division and win the title as well too all right so with that we move on to our final our final group and it's going to be this it's going to be the sunbelt we got the east division app state appalachian state has been a team that's been a constant constant constant